సార్ హలో యాస్ ఓ సార్ ఐ జాయిన్ ఆన్ ఫ్రైడే సార్ ఓకే 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 దిస్ ఇస్ ఎ న్యూ బ్యాచ్ యాక్చువల్లీ యు జాయిన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ బ్యాచ్ డెమోన్స్ట్రేషన్ రైట్ will start in 5 minutes okay let others join హలో కోమల్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ హై నాగేష్ సంపూర్ణ సుబోధ్ సునోవర్ వెంకట్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సో విచ్ విచ్ టూల్ ఇస్ దిస్ దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ జూమ్ రైట్ దిస్ ఇస్ సంథింగ్ డిఫరెంట్ దిస్ ఇస్ గో టు మీటింగ్ Oh, okay okay it's a little different and i'm not i was not getting that unmute button okay. you should have there's a mic yeah, no good morning so, right? yeah yeah i got it now yeah thank you yeah hello raju naresh Hi, sir. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. So, if you are able to hear me and if you are able to see my screen, we will start. Nagesh, are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Cool. <laughs> so do let me know if you have any issues or your screen sharing issues so basically the session is recording okay so the daily sessions will be recorded and shared with you um demo sessions as well as regular sessions also 
okay with lifetime access they will share it with you through google drive okay so that uh, if you miss anything also you really need not to worry you can revise your session through videos and examples everything is available from my blog okay every day content and example everything i'll upload into my blog there you can download directly or else if you have problem accessing my blog i'll share it through email as well okay so this is our blog this is we are going to use i'll share the blog url as well okay so here i'll upload the everyday content uh, examples also already we have all spring until spring aop modules all the examples and everything I uploaded here, you can see until AOP we have. There are other modules also. I'll create one more page for that and I'll add. And upon clicking on it, I'll show you the description as well related to the topic. So that this blog also available. Okay. You can you can always go to our blog and you can read from here. And if you have any questions you can post me through email or you can call me directly okay so you can see sorry for uh, interrupting again yeah hello yes yes yeah is this um because uh sorry for the interrupt um for the first class and this i mean this is my first class uh is this first class to the entire one or the this is the first class. Uh, any session six no no this is our first okay okay class. Okay, continue. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Um. What what I was saying is the recordings will be available and all the examples and the materials everything available here in our website. Okay. You can able to access everything from our website itself. Um. Yeah. It is publicly available. You can go and download everything. Okay. And coming to the modules which we are going to discuss. Right. Our plan is our next 32, uh, 35 days, 35 days working days plan is we are going to cover spring framework from the scratch. Okay. From the beginning, from the beginning spring framework, we discuss once done with spring framework, we discuss spring boot and using spring boot, we discuss microservices also. Okay. So why we need to go with spring framework before is even spring boot also. We'll use all the spring framework concepts okay spring boot is a layer that implemented on top of spring framework only so we should learn spring framework first the next spring boot the next microservices okay here you can see the contents which we are going to discuss okay from spring framework we discuss spring core okay spring core is the basic module or base module we can call this is the important module throughout the spring or spring boot okay so we will spend more time on spring core framework okay many features we have here that all features we need to understand first to understand the all remaining modules okay spring core module we discuss and the next spring jdbc to connect with the databases right the jdbc style of spring framework implementation given okay so we will understand how to connect spring with jdbc uh, to connect to databases and if you want to integrate spring with any orm tool like hibernate right if you don't know hibernate also nothing to worry we discuss hibernate also here okay we will have few sessions for hibernate okay i'll be covering hibernate also as part of spring orm okay then once done with this ORM, you know, right? The ORM is also a kind of advanced JDBC for doing CRUD operations. Okay. ORM is also kind of advanced JDBC for doing CRUD operations only. More than JDBC. Okay. It's not a simple, simple like JDBC. It's more than JDBC. And we have AOP, aspect oriented programming to add services on the fly to the business kind of filters if you heard about filters the filters kind of thing implementations we have in aop that aop discussions we will have the next how to manage distributed transactions when you, when you have multiple database operations 
like in your uh, system when you implement an app when you have multiple transactions we need to maintain consistency in our transactions so we understand the transactions how to commit and roll back when we have multiple transactions right so we understand that from springs transactions and how to apply security if you want to apply security to our application so we need to understand spring security so that authentication and authorization like while doing logging we enter username password and the system need to authenticate whether this user is valid user or not if user is valid it need to check whether this user is having that particular module access or not authorization also it need to check that authentication and authorization we do using spring with security and if you want to implement any web based application we should use spring mvc so finally right once after learning all these the main focus is what spring mvc okay once we done with core jdbc orm aop transaction security we need to integrate all these we need to integrate all these and we have to achieve spring mvc we use spring mvc for building web application okay we use spring mvc for building web application once done with this once done with the spring framework you are good to learn spring boot okay spring boot will become easy for you once you are done with all the spring framework seven modules okay then in spring boot we have to understand what are the spring boot starters we have and what are all the spring boot servers inbuilt servers they have given while dealing with spring boot spring framework you know spring framework is there since 2005 spring boot came around 2015 and 16 okay so between that period while using spring framework we used to use external servers okay so we don't have any inbuilt servers given in spring framework but in spring boot they have given so we understand how to use the inbuilt servers here spring boot servers okay and how to deploy spring boot in cloud environments also we will see if you want to build your application and if you want to move it to cloud environment like aws or um, azure right there are many spring cloud environments available so we will see how to even deploy from your local machine if you have local infrastructure if you have a good server machines in your uh, office or in your home if you want to keep your applications in your local and if you want to expose it into public domain we will see how to deploy and access it and spring boot is having dev tools we discuss about that and actuators spring boot integration with the data spring data or spring jpa which is kind of orm okay but no code here when we when we dealing with spring boot there is very less code we are going to write okay when it comes to spring data even no code without code the database operations can able to perform here so that at that much advanced spring data uh, jpa okay and in spring boot how to do exception handling when we have exceptions throughout the application how to beautify the exception before showing it to the user okay how to filter all the exceptions everything we learn here spring boot exception handling in case if you want to build a web application using spring boot um <clears throat> the front end pages if you want to design we have spring stream leaf uh, uh, tag library you must heard about tags right in jsp we write jsp tags so that kind of tag library we have to make uh, our front end uh, clear and beautiful um, so that theme leaf we see and to do failover handlings and all we use hash strings we discuss that hash strings topics as well so if once done with all this right we need to understand microservices patterns because always nowadays we are deploying or we are developing applications as microservices not as a single application okay microservices means instead of coding everything into a single application each module we are developing as a separate application and we are deploying it consider your application is having 10 modules instead of developing 10 modules in a single application what we do is 10 separate applications we develop and each module if it wants to talk uh, with other module or if it wants to talk with front end we can able to do that 
communication between multiple services and UI also. In microservices, that is possible. We will see how to implement REST controllers. And if one service wants to talk with another service, how to deal with REST template, Eureka, or web client, there are multiple options that we have. We discuss them. And if you want to do load balancing, and if you don't want to show all your services URLs to the um, client or whoever calls, if you want to do kind of some kind of hiding of your URLs, and if you want to do load balancing also using this Eureka server and client, we can do that. We are not going to write any much business logic, simple annotations given. So from Spring Boot, right, we are not going to write much logics here. Most of the things to achieve, they given simple annotations, hardly uh, 10 plus annotations we have, that's all. If you understand that annotations, way to keep, how to use, that's more than enough to understand Spring Boot and microservices. And in microservices, how to handle distributed transactions. When we have multiple services, how to do the transactions, how to do security, how to do logging and tracing. These are the difficult parts, okay? Difficult parts in the sense, as we are uh, breaking down our modules into multiple services. So across services, if you want to manage transaction security logging, right? So we need to understand these concepts, how to apply it. So, okay. So this is the content that we are going to cover. And prerequisites for you is Java 8 and any latest version would be enough to understand these topics, right? You must know Java 8, okay? And to get started with it, you need to install JDK in your machine, okay? And install uh, any database like MySQL or Oracle in your machine, okay? And get the Eclipse as well. Okay, all these are open sources. You can download latest JDK, JDK 9, better to download, okay? Use JDK 9, not JRE, okay? While installing KPI, you need to download JDK, Java Development Kit. And install database like Oracle or MySQL, okay? Install databases and install Eclipse. Eclipse is a IDE for doing development, right? So install Eclipse. And as well as the STS as well. STS we need while before starting Spring Boot. Okay. So these are the modules, right? These are all the modules that we are going to cover. And you will become an expert after this session. You can able to build any kind of Spring application. You can jump into old Spring Framework applications. Or you can um, start using Spring Boot for your new applications. And if you join somewhere to migrate old applications to new applications, you can able to understand old existing Spring Framework applications to migrate them into Spring Boot microservices. So that is the aim of this session, okay? From scratch, from beginning, we are going to discuss. Just I'm expecting Java 8 or any latest version knowledge. Basic Java knowledge would be enough um, to understand all these concepts okay and the tools that you need to install like jdbc mysql and eclipse or oracle also you can use if you want okay so this is the content that we are going to discuss and this will take usually for these discussions right it will take around 35 to 40 working sessions okay daily one hour to one and a half hour sessions we will have daily one hour to one and a half session one and a half hour sessions we will have and you will get the daily recorded sessions through google drive they will share so personally they will share it through your emails only okay you will get daily recorded sessions to your email and demo sessions will be available publicly okay and examples everything you will get through our blog and from mail also you can you can ask me if something not updated in the blog. I'll share it through email as well. Okay, as I said, prerequisites. I'm expecting basic core Java from you guys. So if you know basic core Java OOPS concepts and basic collections, that must be enough and great to understand um, Spring. So a few people will ask like, do we need uh, advanced Java? Do we need struts? Do we need Hibernate? Um, yeah, really not required because on top of on top of these topics only I'm going to 
show you spring and uh, spring uh, other modules so that it is not really mandatory to you to have all that framework knowledge or advanced java knowledge if you know that's well and good if not also nothing to worry okay so earlier earlier right we used to have this many topics for implementing applications we used to learn core java for building standalone applications right using core java what we can do basic standalone single mission applications we can run like calculator or any uh, single uh, system applications like medical shop management systems so such applications only we can able to build using core java when you want to build kind of web application we have to use advanced java advanced java having servlets okay using servlets we can able to build web applications so there we need a server in server we need to deploy this like tomcat or web spare so when we build servlet applications we need a tomcat server there we can deploy it on top of servlets there are many frameworks came into the market like struts 1x struts 2x framework right and jsf wicket gwt there are many frameworks came into the market in early 2000s and now they are no more in the market jsf still there but nobody is using okay many frameworks in the market before and to connect with uh, databases we have jdbc and on top of jdbc hibernate also came into the market these are for connecting with the databases okay and earlier we used to have ejbs also for distributed applications okay uh, for distributed applications we used to use ejbs nowadays we are not using ejbs we are using microservices even for distributed applications okay so we are not using a distributed ejbs architecture this is very complex architecture and definitely they need a server so when you are implementing ejbs we need to have a web container and we need to have a application container so that we need to buy servers there only we should deploy so to avoid all these complexities right to avoid all these complexities from here to here to avoid all these complexities spring came into the market spring made everything easy and simple okay using spring if you are going to implement any application yes spring will allow you to implement any standalone applications web applications or distributed applications right so anything anything we can able to build without without single rupee investment on infrastructure because inbuilt servers also they have given just if you are going to start any application let's say you have a, a dream that you want to build a application for your shop and if you want to sell your items uh, through online shopping so if you want to build it choose spring framework and build your online shop application and finally you can code it and finally you can convert into a jar file or var file and you can deploy it anywhere you can use aws or azure or you can deploy it in local okay that much simple it is just java runtime environment is required for it java runtime is everywhere available so if you build application using spring run it anywhere just java is required to run that okay so finally if you run spring spring will allow you to make any kind of application in a simple way and you can deploy it anywhere to run anywhere just you need java like your core java how you are running anywhere you can run right the core java classes similar to that once you learn with spring boot spring boot applications can be running anywhere just java runtime environment is required to run that okay yeah any doubt so far using spring mvc spring mvc is from spring Fro core framework okay i mean spring framework so if you are building application using spring framework okay we keep all the modules we keep all the modules all the application modules in a single application and we develop it let's say as i said online shop application you are building like your product uh, product module and online cart module okay user management module all these modules you need to develop 
into a single application okay into a single application we develop it. like online shop so this is your online shop application when you build by using spring mvc right all your modules and your front end views also your views html code css whatever you implemented your views html css javascript libraries everything we include into a single application itself everything we include into our application itself all our modules and views everything will be in a single piece finally we convert this finally we convert this once we done with spring framework we can able to do this okay spring framework once we done with spring framework you can able to do this you can build a web application using spring mvc and all other modules finally how you can deploy it is to deploy this you need to convert it to a var file you need to convert into a var file your application name dot var web archive file you need to convert this into web archive file and you can run this on any server you need to pick a server like tomcat or weblogic you need to have a web container to run this so finally you can deploy this application var file here to launch your application to run application you need to do this okay when it comes to spring boot when it comes to spring boot when it comes to spring boot same thing you can implement using spring boot you can implement the same thing you can build your application if you want to keep everything into single application itself you can develop even in spring boot also you can develop everything together your views your you know modules everything together and finally you can convert your application into a jar file app name dot jar simple jar would be enough you need not to convert it into a var if you want you can do that okay we have that multiple options you can convert it into application name dot var file if you want to use built-in servers only you can convert into application name dot jar file when you use a var file when you use a var file you need to deploy this into external tomcat or web browser you need a server in that server only you can able to deploy your var file but if it is a jar file right if it is a jar file you don't need any server let's say if it is cloud environment you are in your aws cloud or azure cloud right or your local machine in your local you need to have the software tomcat or weblogic you need to have there only you can deploy it when it is a jar file you need not any servers java runtime is required java runtime means jre is required jre should be required to run jar file so if you have java runtime in your machine or in client machine wherever you want to run your jar file there they just need jar uh, java runtime environment jre should be available even if it is your aws or azure right or your local environment okay any local environment just jre would be enough so when you use jre how you can run the web application i built web application which is having views and multiple modules spring boot is having built in servers also spring boot itself is having built yeah, excuse me so spring boot is having spring boot itself is having built in tomcat right it is having built in tomcat jetty undertow there are many web servers we'll see how to configure i'll show you tomcat is built in you no need to do any additional configuration just when you create spring boot application tomcat will be available if you don't want to use tomcat we can go with jetty or undertow 
many many open source web servers are available we can configure them just as a jar files you need to add them or else in a maven as a dependency you need to add it that's it so servers are available as a jars so built in servers right you need not to install any additional server to run your application as built in embedded servers we have those servers are enough to launch your application okay so this is how spring boot used to be then what about microservices once learn with spring framework i understand that i can able to build web application by including all the modules and views finally i need to convert into a var file and i need to deploy it into tomcat fine if it is a spring boot same thing you can convert into var and deploy it into tomcat or else you can convert into jar and you can run it on java runtime environment we don't have any particular server dependencies also here by using the same benefit by using the same benefit in spring boot only what you can do is instead of developing all these modules into a single application instead of developing all these modules into a single application you can develop them as like microservices you can break you can break each module into a separate service itself so instead of keeping everything together for your online up shopping application for views you can create one angular application for views you can create one angular or react or by using javascript whatever you use create a separate application for views okay use use angular here if you want angular or react or any jquery javascript along with your html css right so you can build separate view application so you can build separate view application right and you can deploy this view into view servers like if it is angular you can run it on <coughs> angular environment you can run it on angular environment as a separate application it's a web instance right you can run it on any angular environment or else if it is a simple standalone you can deploy anywhere you can deploy into git pages anywhere you want or in your aws itself a static application this can be a static you don't need any dynamic code so you can use git pages or aws static anywhere you can deploy your application only view code we will have only views we will have here so views will be in separate application and if this views wants to talk with your application okay this applications will be deployed separately product will be deployed into one server cart will be deployed into another server user management will be deployed into again another service okay we use different different services or different environments to run them this is what we do in microservices okay so here we use one instance or one environment environment one we deploy one service in environment two we deploy next service in environment three we deploy another service this is how we create multiple environments to deploy our services particularly in microservices in microservices we break our application into multiple modules each module we deploy into multiple environments product jar we separately deploy right cart jar we separately deploy and user management jar we deploy separately in different environments now when your views wants to talk with this when your views wants to talk with them we create from use when you want to talk with these applications we create gateways here some kind of api gateway this is like a gate this gateway will verify your request whether this is safe request or not when we request from our static pages the request will go to gateway gateway will decide whether this should go to product or it should go to cart or it should go to user management it will decide and it will forward it so there are many other concepts also in microservices so this is the basic pattern right one single application we deploy into multiple pieces 
multiple um, you know uh, jar files we break it into multiple modules and we deploy it into multiple environments so there are many benefits if you go with microservices right there are many benefits multiple teams parallelly they can work let's say if you want to launch your product if you want to launch this product into the market in next coming month if you decide to develop this in a faster way if you choose spring boot and if you are going to implement it together into a single application you can't deploy multiple teams uh, like if you have 30 members they can't able to work together if it is a single piece application there will be many confusions if that many people are trying to working on one application while doing merges and all you will get many conflicts okay and they will have dependency on each other so to avoid that if you can able to break it into multiple pieces 10 people can work on product 10 on card 10 on user management parallelly they can work once done with their work they can deploy into their environment and their module will be ready they can develop and they can test and they can deploy it so parallelly we can develop all the modules together and we can deploy them so multiple teams can work parallelly and they can deliver application in a less time okay not only that there are many other features also we will discuss very in detail okay this is how you can able to build your applications once done with spring framework basic spring web applications you can able to build and we deploy them into tomcat and once done with spring boot you can able to build your applications in the same way but in a easier way okay using simple annotations we can able to achieve everything very less number of lines code we write in spring boot and finally if you want to deploy it you can directly run it on java environment using jar otherwise if you have some dependency some dependency in the sense if client want to run it in tomcat only you can convert into var and you can deploy it no worries instead of using built-in you can use external tomcat also okay and microservices using spring boot we can able to develop each module as a separate application and you can deploy it into multiple environments and we can able to build views also as a separate application and finally we can integrate everything together okay so this is how the applications you know we, we can able to build using spring okay finally i'll show you one live application okay finally what i will do on live application i'll show you on live application we deploy we develop and deploy it in our clouds itself we do development here and i'll show you how to deploy it in aws and azure and even git also git for static pages and i'll show you how to integrate with your domain url finally once done with the application development like you might purchase something like www.myshop.com from godaddy or somewhere right so to this domain how to integrate your applications and how to how to bring your application into live i will show you okay so finally you are going to finally we can become a, a like a complete end-to-end -end developer you can able to handle anything even you can do your own startup are we clear any doubt so far guys you following me yes sir in spring boot can yes, i convert into hmm. go ahead sir yeah in spring framework can convert in only ap dot waterfall right spring boot can be a var or can be a jar also it can be jar also okay mostly we deploy it as a jar we don't recommend var because built-in tomcat is enough we i myself i used azure and aws right i used to deploy it as jar only okay but it's it's all you have options right you have var option and jar option 
and if it is a var option you need to download tomcat web logic if it is jar option nothing required jar is required so which one you choose so which is having sir mostly with hmm. so mostly with spring boot we use the azure or aws you can use it depends right mostly um uh, what i observed is many using azure azure functions azure. are using yeah if it is a large scale application and um aws is having infrastructure wise use compare with azure okay sir but azure for uh, azure, azure dashboard is easy also uh, to access and to verify they, they sir, just very like AWS, we need Jenkins, right? So in Azure, we'll do, we need something else, Azure DevOps something. No, no, same Jenkins we can use. Okay, same Jenkins. Yeah, okay, same okay. Jenkins, Kubernetes, we have, we can create, uh, you know, DevOps tools we can use there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'll show you all the uh, deployments, how to, uh, you know, create AWS account or Azure account and deploy free accounts. I'll create and there I'll deploy. And even if you don't want to go with uh, the clouds, if you want to go with your in premises uh, or your local environments, I'll show you how to deal with that. So, do we need credit card for creating AWS account? Yes, for AWS and uh, Azure, you need credit card or debit card. If you don't have for debit card with debit card also we can create account in aws i think yeah i used a debit card only i created okay. multiple times just they will charge two rupees later they will refund that as well okay okay sir. thank you and weekly some hours as a free they will provide and they'll send you notifications as well what you need to do is while using azure or aws once deploying your application you need to test and you need to delete your environment Otherwise, okay. the environment will be keep on live. It will eat the time, the free time. Okay. okay sir. As soon as you create environment, you need to deploy your application, test it, and delete the environment. Okay. okay. Those are simple. Okay. You really need not to worry about how what is AWS or Azure. Simple. We need to create account, and there are many services. We go there and we deploy directly. <laughs> okay yeah this is what the plan and this is the content um as i shown you right from our blog itself so this is the blog this is available for you uh 24 by 7 you can go there and you can read and you can download everything available here yeah yeah this is weekend batch or the daily batch this is daily batch okay okay, okay. So daily uh, seven to eight thirty, one and a half hour sessions we we used to have. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any any questions? Okay, so mostly the sessions like interactive sessions only. Okay, you can stop me anywhere if you have any doubt. Okay. Um, so just from beginner to expert, uh, uh, I'll, I'll make you guys here. If you are not, um, aware of spring before also, no worries. We are going to starting it from the beginning. Okay. From basic spring core version to advanced microservices. Okay. Just, just you need to have java knowledge basic java knowledge would be great and enough here okay so yeah this is what um from tomorrow we will discuss about spring framework okay i'll start discussing about spring framework and this images and all right whatever we created daily basis i'll forward to you okay class notes i'll forward to you on a daily basis
So are we guys clear? Any doubts? Anything? So if not, yeah, that's all for today. Tomorrow we'll connect sharp 7 a.m. Okay. So just today and tomorrow we'll have demo sessions. Thereafter we'll start the regular sessions. Okay. For demo sessions, you can use the same link which you join. Okay. And for regular sessions, they will create a new link and they'll forward it to you. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Sure. Cool. Yeah. So thanks. Um, and please share your email IDs, okay? Uh, so that I, I could able to forward the examples and all during our demo sessions. Please share your mail address here in the chat. Actually, unable to see chat option. Where is the? There are three options. I mean, you have this uh, audience view, screen sharing, webcam, audio, multiple platforms. We have it. Are you able to see control panel, mute option? Yeah. So there you have one uh, arrow, right? Uh, you will see a red arrow. Are you able to see that? Yeah. So click on yeah. the red arrow. Okay. Is it expanded now? Yeah. The window will expand. There you have on on the bottom chart option. Do you see? No, sir, not there. Okay. Or else you guys can WhatsApp me. I shared my contact. Sir, create on group. Uh, no, after regular session, I'll start creating group. Okay. I'll create a WhatsApp group. Uh, we, everyone, will be in a same group itself. As these are demo sessions, right? We should not do right now but yeah from tomorrow session right uh, i'll create a group and add everyone so this is my number i shared with everyone so just send your email address okay and you can keep this number for your reference if you have any doubts or if you have any network issues or if you see any issues during session you can text me or you can call me okay Sir, where you have shared this also we did I did not see where you have shared the number chart only only option we have chart or else yeah everything so we don't have chat I'm not sure I'm not able to see chat yeah, yeah. so yeah me too same thing this is my number okay this is my yeah, same problem. no no on screen also you can see right the type your notepad sir Nine. You can able to see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So I share my mail ID. That is that 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 double nine double six. Yes, sir. Nine one eight two six. 
Так что... Так что... Так что... Так что...